Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about MBVM and Swift UI. And the way I'm going to explain this to you is by using practical examples. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So first of all, what is MBVM? MBVM is a preferred architecture design paradigm for Swift UI projects. So it basically allows us to um, improve our code organization by dividing our code into parts that belong to the model, to the view and the view model. It is also different from MDC, which was heavily used with UIKit, which we had before Swift UI. Now, what is the idea behind MVVM? So as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to divide our code into models, view models and views. Now let's start with the models. What is a model? Now, a model can represent data and logic. So imagine you have this struct person that contains some name and an age, then any instance out of it would represent some data. However, we could also have some logic if you have some game, for example, that itself is also a model. Now inside of this game model, we also have this cards array where card itself is also a model. And we have some logic, for example, to choose a card where we would most likely modify the cards array by, for example, flipping the card at a specific index in the array. Now a model is completely UI independent. So there's never some code like this. You can't have a card view inside of a model called card. And you should also not modify the view inside of a model. The model also represents the source of truth. Now, if we would create an instance of a person with the name Alice and age 32, then that is the source of truth. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, how does the view work? The view is everything visible on the screen. If you create a new Swift UI project in Xcode, you will have this content view, which basically renders this hello world text view on screen. This is a view because it presents data directly on the screen. Now the content view is a view. The text is also a view. And um, if you had something else like a button, it would also be a view because those are all things that can be presented on the screen. Now the main goal of a view should always be to display the source of truth. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the source of truth is represented by some model. So you could simply just read it directly from the model, which is fine. In fact, for very simple apps, you do not even need the view model. You can directly read it from the model and present it on the view. However, most of the times your apps are not that simple. You're not only reading from the model, but you also have to do some other things. Now assume our app has this edit button. And when the edit button is tapped, the user wants to change, for example, the name or age. In that case, read only doesn't help us. Now, another reason why read only is not very helpful for a more complex app is assume our person model doesn't store the age as an integer because the developer noticed it would be much smarter to um, store the birthday as a date because then we can automatically update the age based on the birthday and the current date. Now, if the view would try to read this birthday, which is of type date, it would be a bit confused because it is not really interested in the date object, it's more interested in the age. So it also has to translate this into something that is relevant for the view. So the responsibilities for the view increases. The view does not only display the source of truth, but it also has to translate and modify the model. Now, to reduce the complexity, we have the view model. Now, the view model is our interpreter between the model and the view. And you can think of it as some kind of glue between both of these. Now, let's have a look at the previous example. Assume we have, again, this model. And this time, the age is replaced with the birthday and we're just storing the date in there. Now the view model will instantiate a model. However, it will also interpret the model into something that is more relevant to the view because the view can't do anything with the date. The view model will then convert this birthday into an age that is more relevant to the view. And then the view can basically read off the view model and just use the data that is necessary to present on the view. And the view can easily read the, the name and age and update its view easily. So this is an example of interpreting. However, what happens if the user decides to tap on the edit button, for example? Now, in that case, the view would not directly modify the model, but instead it will let the view model know because the view model's task is also to process intents. So when the edit view button was tapped, it will tell the view model to change the name to Bob and the view model will then modify the model. And sometimes it happens really fast. Sometimes it is a network request and the change of the model depends on how long the network request takes. However, at some point the model or the source of truth will be modified and the view model will notice that change. 
Now the view model has to notify the view about the change and the way it notifies the view about it is it publishes that something changed. Now on the other hand for the view to notice that something changed it has to observe constantly for changes from the view model. So the view is automatically capable to observe these changes. Now to get a better idea of this let's jump into Xcode and have a look at it more closely. Let's start by creating a new Xcode project and make sure you choose the app. Give it some name, I will simply call this one MVVM. And also make sure that the interface is set to Swift UI, the lifecycle to Swift UI app and the language to Swift. Continue by pressing next, save it somewhere you like. All right, once you're in Xcode, make sure that you select the iPhone 11 as your simulator and try to get the automatic preview to run. Now, when our project is created for the first time, you will get this content view that's Swift and inside you will have this content view struct. Now in terms of MVVM, this will be part of our views. And usually you would create separate groups for them. So you would go in here, right click and create a new group. And you would do something like this for the views, models and view models. However, for simplicity, I will just um, separate them by these comments. So I will just remove this group for now. Now let's start by defining our model. Let's say we have this similar example as from the presentation before. We will have a struct called person and inside of that person we will have a variable called name of type string and a variable age of type integer. Now if we just want to read off the models and do not really want to interact with them, we could just use it in our view. So we could say something like let Alice be equal to a person and then initialize it with a name and an H, and then we could simply uh, pass it in here and for example, show the name. Now this is totally fine. However, once your app gets more complex, it is not that sufficient for you anymore to just read it off the uh, model. Now let's put this uh, text into a vertical stack. So we will embed it into a vertical stack and I will just copy this down here and uh, instead of the name, I want the uh, age as well. So I have to cast it into a string because the age is of type integer. And then I can say alice.h. And if you resume, you should see it here as well. And also let me change the font so we can better see it. All right, now assume the age we are getting is not an integer anymore because it's kind of annoying to uh, reset the age every time. So it's probably easier if we just store the uh, birthday for a person and then calculate the age. So let's make this a birthday and also the type will be then a date. Now Xcode will complain here because we do not have an age yet. We have a birthday and now for simplicity, I'm going to set the birthday to the current date. So just initialize date. And let me also close this sidebar. Now, obviously this won't work anymore. So let me first comment this out and see if this uh, runs. All right. Now, obviously it becomes a bit more tricky to uh, show the age here because all we have is the birthday, but we have to go calculate the current year minus the birthday year to get the actual age and have to make sure that this is a string. Now doing all of this in here become really unmaintainable at some point. And this is where the view model comes in as a translator and takes care of this for us. So let me create the view model first. I will simply call this view model content view view model. And usually view models conform to the protocol observable object because as I mentioned in the presentation, the view model has to somehow notify the view when the model changed. And you can do that by making sure that the view model conforms to this protocol. Now, instead of instantiating the model inside of the view, we will instantiate it in our view model. So I will just paste this in here. And usually this is also a variable because it can change the model. Now we still have to use our view model inside of our view and observe the changes. And there are many ways you can do that. You can do it like so. 
you declare a property wrapper called observed object or a variable called real model and declare it as a type of content view model. And this is totally fine. All you have to do is let the parent view take care of the initialization. Now, oftentimes you also see something like this and this works sometimes. However, in many cases it will lead to a crash because you will most likely use your view model in here. And when you initialize it in here already, every time this view gets rebuilt, you uh, allocating memory in the heap repeatedly. So if you decide to initialize it in here, you should not use observed object, but instead use state object. And you tell the view to keep the reference to this. All right, now we have access to the view model. Now inside of the view model, we made this model public, but you could actually even make it private because the way we make the properties of a model accessible to the view is by our own getters. So we would have something like the name, and here we would simply return ls.name and we would also return the age of type string. Now here we would do some uh, date magic that turns the date into an age string. And then at some point we will return 32. Now, obviously here we would do something more. We would probably have some kind of date format initialized in here as well and do some basic math to figure out what the actual age should be. However, that is the cool part about the view model. It hides the complexity to the view. All that the view has to do is simply access it. So to access the name, it would simply say viewmodel.name and to access the age, it would simply say remodel age and if you resume you will see both alice and her age now let's make it a bit more complex let's say we have a button and the button will have some title let's say change name and the action is going to be to change the name to bob and the way we do that is we, we are going to tell the view model to do that instead of directly accessing the model and to do that, the view model needs to have an intent. So let's create one. It's going to be a function called change name. And it's going to take a name as of type string. And it will simply say alice.name is equal to the new name that we get as an argument. Now let's try this. And let's resume and run this. Now, if we tap on change name, you will notice nothing happens. Why is nothing happening here? Well, we're telling the view model to change the name to Bob. And the view model changes the model, just as we saw in the uh, presentation. However, at no point we are really uh, telling the view that our model changed. So how, do, how does the view model notify the view about the change? Now the way you do that is you have to mark the model that is going to change with the add published property wrapper. And that way when this name is changed, I publish that something changed so that anything uh, listening to it will notice it. In this case, the content view is interested in when the view model changes, so it will get notified. So let's try if this works. So if I change the name now, it will change to Bob. Now, this is a pretty simple example of MVVM. However, you can already see how beneficial it is to have such a view model. It takes care of complex calculations and formatting into a type that is more useful to a view, but it also takes care of modifying the model and notifying the view when the model changed. All right, now this is really all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when new content arrives and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.